So good morning, and if you're just joining us recently, I welcome you to our service this morning. My name is Reverend Angela Denton, and this morning we will be continuing our series based on the book, The Universe Has Got a Plan, 10 Golden Rules of Letting Go, and that was written by Matt Kahn. So last week, when we were exploring golden rule number four, I had shared with you that Matt had a near-death experience when he was about eight years old. And he says that his near-death experience, he was, it, it is something that was beyond words for him. It's where all time and space dissolved, where he didn't feel like his separate body from nature, from the whole of life. There was exquisite light and colors and there was this experience of oneness and of such profound beauty and peace. This is what many will call a mystical experience. And it's when we have that direct palpable presence of the experience of the universal divine by whatever name we call it. And so this mystical experience, his near death experience led for him to have very early on a burning desire. That burning desire was to know God and to live from the oneness of God. And he shares that he remembers sitting in Sunday school, listening to interpretations of what God is while thinking, nah, that's not it at all. It felt more like a mystical Santa Claus sitting on a cloud watching to determine which list your name goes on. And as a child, I found this uninspiring and almost silly, while yet still captivated by a deeper inner yearning to know the deepest truth, the deepest truth of him, of God. And when Matt was now in the fifth grade, he had another mystical experience. It was right before vacation, before holiday vacation, where people celebrate the Christmas holiday, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, and that afternoon, their academic schedule was cleared and they all went to the auditorium where they were having the pleasure to listen to the school band and the choir. And all of a sudden, Matt states that the holiest of holiest profound songs started to play. And that was, do you hear what I hear? And as that song played, Matt described that it literally felt like the ceiling had opened up with heaven's kingdom inviting him home. I literally was seconds away from a volcanic level of emotional outbursts. I had never in my life felt that emotionally moved and inspired outside of my out-of-body experience. Now at this point, as the emotions were welling within him and tears started to stream from his face, he said, oh no, there is no way I can let this emotion all out, he said, because I will be the laughing stock of this school. And so with all of what he could muster, he got up from the seat in the auditorium, left the auditorium, found a side door, went outside so that he can, quote unquote, compose himself. And when he did, he went back in to the show, to the concert. He knew, even though he didn't understand at such a young age what was happening, 
within him, it wasn't tears of sadness. It was tears of overwhelming beauty and joy. And although he didn't understand the depth of what was going on, he knew something big had occurred. He knew something beautiful had occurred. And it wasn't until later on in adulthood where he realized what it was. It was his true nature being awakened within him. It was the inherent well-being that springs up when we tap into that personal experience of something greater, the, the breath of all life, and we are in touch with it in that personal understanding within our, ourselves, knowing that we too are that breath of life, that we too are beautiful and divinely made, so to speak. And he realized as he reflected um, in his spiritual studies that it was answered prayer as he was sitting there in that auditorium, that he held that burning desire to know God and to be one with the will of God. Now, as I shared earlier, just a few moments ago, that Matt did not have this belief in a God out there in a cloud that was orchestrate, orchestrating things. So lots of times when we think of the will of God, it's like, okay, God out there, tell me what you wanna do. His belief of the will of God is in alignment with one of Unity's teachings, which is called divine will. And the divine will is the same for all of us. We may express it in different ways. We may share our gifts in different ways. But ultimately, divine will is for each one of us to discover and express the fullness of our divine nature. And that is not something that for many of us, you know, some of us may have had a mystical experience and they don't have to be so profound as a near death experience or what happened to Matt, but where time stands still. So yes, we have that twinge within us during that, but lots of times for us that awakening is, takes time as we tune in and tap in and discover that. Now I know Matt is not alone in his desire, right? To hear that call, to know God, to know the truth of us. What's our purpose? What is it all about? And I know that that is alive for many of you who are here on some level, and then maybe it might come in a different fashion, or otherwise you wouldn't be uh, inclined to be part of a, a community like this. And so as we look at that name and then claiming it, knowing that each time we turn inward, each and every time we turn inward and have that experience of our divine essence, where we're like really allowing the activation of love to surface, where we are calling forth our strength and we're standing with somebody who is going through a challenging time or being present with that within ourselves. That every time that we tune in and tap in, regardless of what is going on, that a well sense of well-being is animated. And I have had those experiences when I was in financial distress, when there was disharmony in a relationship, but nevertheless, and knowing that as I go within and seek to animate that which is wanting to be animated within me, embracing the fullness of my human, humanity, but also knowing that I can tune in and tap into the resiliency and compassion. And then in the midst of what may be financial distress, it's like there's an experience of beauty and experience of joy because I can know that that is not the truth of everything and that no thing or no one can upset the calm peace of my soul. And so this leads us into how Matt Kahn had formulated golden rule number five, which states, well-being is a signal that you are ready to embody your potential. 
the stronger that tapping in and that knowing is a signal that we are saying, yes, I know the truth and I want to live more boldly into it. I want to animate the full potential. And Matt shares that more often you recognize the presence of being within you, you are saying to the universe, you are naming, you are proclaiming, you are activating. I'm aware of what is already right and perfect and whole inside of me. And when I can do that for myself, we can become aware of what is right, perfect and whole inside of others, despite those, those appearances. And when you affirm that perfection and well-being is within you, it tells the universe that you have the worthiness and the emotional availability to receive more blessings in your life, right? When we affirm more than words, but we put into action our own divinity, which we'll talk a bit about more in just a moment, we are activating we are claiming it, we are naming it. We're not just telling the universe, we are declaring it also for ourselves. And so how do we, we we've explored this. There's many ways we activate our well-being. <clears throat> when we, and, and look at what it was, there's no accident that today, principle five, Joyce read principle five, right? It is not enough to know the truth. We must live the truth we know, right? So I can study the law of mind action all I want. But if I don't clearly say, you know, divinely ordering, not by chance, divine order is mine idea expression. How will I divinely order my life today? What will I hold in thought in mind, right? And what divine ideas will spring forth so that I can live it, activate it, expression, have it manifest in my world by being it. So one practical way of doing that within using the unity teachings is activating principle. One I just shared, but there are 12 powers, which are all 12 principles, always ready to be expressed. They're happening all the time. However, for us, it is us becoming consciously aware and doing it and living it with intention, right? So our 12, our 12 spiritual abilities are divine potential alive within us. And when we choose to be intentional with them, that is when we experience that well-being, right? When we reach inside and say, I am going to intentionally activate my principle of faith, of strength, of life from the highest expression possible of my divine nature. So we activate our, I'm just giving some examples of some of these. So we activate our principle of faith when we place our conviction in our divinity. And so here, you know, a simple e example. So when I had uh, decided that I was gonna enter into the field program to become first licensed and then ordained as a unity minister, it was a great idea. I felt inspired from within. And so I do, you know, do the application, blah, blah, blah. And then I'm at, at Unity Village and it was the evening before I had to go before a panel and do like a sample lesson. Well, I was like second guessing my choice. And I was like, this is crazy. Why are you putting yourself through this? Like, you know, like, you know, ministers don't really make a whole lot of money anyway. And I'm like, totally, <laughs> totally in my ego and putting my conviction or I was activating my faith in the direction of my personality, my smallness that I couldn't do this. And then I chose again and I'm like, okay, breathing deep in, you know, I actually had to go for a walk, you know, rub the, you know, doing those things to ground myself, then doing some heart math. And then I just decided that, yes, I'm going to place my conviction in my divinity and that I could actually stand before these individuals 
and allow my divinity to shine forth. Principle of strength. How do we, how do we call forth that into activation? I activate my strength by staying the course of a healing protocol. You know, there was a time when I had candida infection so severe within me in my, I think it was my early thirties and I couldn't see out of my eyes. Uh, there was burning in my nose. And so I was put on a protocol where I could only eat lean proteins, vegetables, and that was pretty much it. No sugar, no rice, no starches or anything like that. And so I chose to activate the principle of strength to stay the course. You know, it wasn't something that healed overnight. And when I tapped into my faith and claimed my divinity, it wasn't in that moment. But after saying that in the strength, then that well-being, it's like I'm saying yes to, and then you move into that experience of that well-being. An example of principle of life would be every time that you decide to energize and align and enliven intention, your intentions, your goals, your desires, not by just stay, saying your affirmations, but taking action. You know, Vicki Mapes has shared with us on many occasions that she had the desire to begin to help people with Parkinson's. And there was that frightening, like, oh, I don't think I, I'm not experienced. I don't have a certain, you know, degree or so on and so on. But nevertheless, she chose also to place her faith in her divinity, activating that, activating her strength, staying the course. And then she didn't just wish it, affirm it. She took some steps, you know, putting out a newsletter, seeking somebody to help her with a website and a business plan. She animated that into life. And it didn't maybe feel good as we're, as we're listening to the ego, but then it's like, oh, the well-being of touching our divinity springs forth. Matt Kahn also shares that we can tap into that spring of well-being by being aware of the preciousness of life and by the very breath is synonymous with the breath of, of, of the animating of something greater within all of us. And so we can energize and enliven that sense of well-being within us when we are intentionally focusing on our breath. And he defines breath as this, the infinite light of source energy, the infinite light of source energy. And as you breathe in, you are taking in the light of existence, cleansing, purifying and nourishing all aspects of your being with each breath, all the light you have taken in goes out into the world for the healing and awakening and well-being of every heart. Well, if that's the case, right? Beautiful, profound. How many of you have been touched by just witnessing the breath, being able to just be in that awe of life? And it is powerful. But how often are we aware of this? How often do we allow our breath to bring forth that sense of well-being in it. If we are breathing 24 seven, why are we not like overflowing with this fountain of youth, this sense of well-being? And it is because for many of us, we live life breathless, mindless, and intentionless. And I'm not saying our whole day, but many times we can go on automatic pilot. And often what we are energizing or animating with our breath is our greatest fears, our anxieties, our worthlessness. 
Now, it doesn't mean that we can totally bypass our human experience, but as we become aware of it, what do we do? Do we return to the breath? Do we return to, hey, today I'm going to wake up and, you know, I've been really struggling with claiming my divinity and I am going to put my faith in it today. And I'm going to see how can I activate my faith today pointed in that direction. And the other thing we can do is throughout the day, tune in and tap into the awareness of our breath. And that means that we take time to notice our breath in a meaningful way, remembering what it is. It is the source of all life. It is the light of existence. And then Matt invites us to offer ourselves some self-compassion, falling in love with ourselves, warts and all, embracing our humanity, and then also going deep within. And so as you take time throughout your day to notice your breath and offer yourself compassion, and if you're in a place, offer loving kindness to another, you know, in prayer and, and after the prayer, you can do it in action. He also invites in those breaks throughout the day to affirm golden rule Mantra number five, which is profoundly beautiful. My breath is the living presence of well being. The more mindfully I breathe, the more alive I feel. In the silence of your own home, I would like you to affirm that with me as I, as we say it together. My breath is the living presence of well-being. The more mindfully I breathe, the more alive I feel. Gently close your eyes and take it even deeper as you take those deep breaths in and deep breaths out as we affirm, my breath is the living presence of well-being. The more mindfully I breathe, the more alive I feel. And so this is something you can put on a note card if it so moves you. It moves me. I think it's profoundly beautiful. And you could take those moments, whether it's on an index, index card, a post-it, some text added, Word, Google Docs, wherever you want to put it, where you can take those mindful breaks throughout the day. And then there is the deeper practice. This is something you can do that will take a couple of minutes, maybe a minute or so. And then there's the deeper practice that he invites you into. And I'm going to read this prayer, which is very beautiful. And so if you choose to close your eyes, I invite you to do so. Becoming aware of the warmth of the breath that fills each inhalation and exhalation. Just taking a few seconds to be in that stillness of your breath. Now allow these words to deeply penetrate your heart, your soul, your mind, your body. My mind is a manifestation of breath. The more aligned with my breath I am, the clearer my mind becomes. My body is a manifestation of breath. The more aligned with my breath I am, the more vibrant and open my body becomes.
my emotions are a manifestation of breath. The more aligned with breath I am, the more harmonious my emotions shall be. My world is a manifestation of breath. The more aligned with breath I am, the more fulfilling my relationships shall be. Every aspect of reality is a manifestation of breath. The more aligned with breath I am, the more real I shall be. Instead of living in the reality of my ego's fantasy, I shall dwell in the reality of my soul's eternal light where I can simply abide with my breath as an announcer of well-being, becoming aware that within me, well-being and perfection are always alive. And to the signal to the universe that in recognizing my breath as evidence of perfection, I am ready, willing, and able to receive more perfection from the well-being within me. And to receive it with worthiness and joy as a gift for myself and for those who don't know the worthiness of their eternal light, allowing my happiness to be a service to all. And so I am free. My breath is a living presence of well being. The more mindfully I breathe, the more alive I feel. And so it is, and so it shall be. And my friends, may you intentionally activate the principles, the 12 powers within you, activate that which you believe and activate that well-being from the breath of life that breathes you. And so it is. Amen. Have a blessed week. Love and appreciate you all. Thank you so much, Reverend Angela. Now our, our read our affirmation. My breath is the living presence of well-being. The more mindfully I breathe, the more alive I feel. Our guardian angel will now stop recording the service. <laughs>